Almighty, all-powerful. Oh, Jesus, 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 we thank You. Jesus, we thank You, we thank You. We thank You, Holy Spirit. We thank You, Holy Spirit, for moving in our midst. We thank You, Father God, for pouring out Your love upon us today. Pouring out Your love upon us today. Pouring out Your love. Pouring out Your love, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Lord, wonderful Jesus. Jesus. Just one touch. Just one touch from the Master's hand. <laughs> Just one touch from the Master's hand. Oh, hallelujah. And your life will never be the same. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Hallelujah. Your body will never be the same. Hallelujah. Your mind will never be the same. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Lord, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. We press in to you, Lord. Lord, we press past the things of the flesh. We press past, Lord, those, those worldly ideas, Lord. Those, we press past, Lord, anything that holds us back from you. Lord, we cast it aside. We lay every burden at your feet, Lord Jesus. Lord, for you are bigger, you are greater, more wonderful, more wonderful, more awesome, <laughs> more awesome, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Jesus. That's it. That's it. He's pouring in his love. He's pouring in that love. He's pouring in that love right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's pouring it in. He's pouring it in. He's pouring it in. Praise you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. <laughs> Everything you're looking for, everything that you need, everything. it's all found in His presence. It's all found in His presence. It's all found in His presence. Jesus. <laughs> That's why even John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that He may increase. John was saying, I must go lower and lower so that He may be exalted. It's all about total surrender. It's all about total surrender. Just let the Lord have His way. Just let Him have His way in your life. Just let Him have His way in your life. Hallelujah. Just let Him have His way. Just let Him have His way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord, hallelujah. Never the same, never the same, never the same again, never the same again. <laughs> Some of you, by the time you walk out of this place, you'll never be the same again. <laughs> never the same again, never the same again. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Whoo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. In Jesus' name. May I pray for you? Come over here, my friend. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, for the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name right now. Jesus. Jesus. Feeling Him to overflowing, Lord. Feeling Him to overflow. Feel Him to overflowing, Lord. Feel Him to overflowing, Jesus. The fire of God in Jesus' name. Just surrender it all to Him. And you'll walk in total freedom. 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 freedom. Thank you, Lord. Filled in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now for a total restoration in this knee. In the name of Jesus. Lord, by your stripes, this knee is made whole. This knee is made whole right now. Completely whole. Completely whole. Completely whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just tell him, say, Lord, I give you everything. Lord, I surrender it all to you. Take me, Lord. Take all of me. Do your work in me, Jesus. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Can I pray for you, my friend? Come here. Lift your hands, man. It's like God do it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, that you answer the cry of his heart. Lord, because you've already heard it. And so, Lord, I thank you for that right now. Fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Jesus. The fire of God in Jesus' name right now. Shombrasabakata. Kovrosabatan baradabata. Kobrosotombrosete. <laughs> Jesus. That's it. That's it. Just let him feel you. Just let him feel you. Let him feel you. Let him feel you. Let him feel you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> God will bring it all together. He's going to bring it all together. Don't try and make it happen. He's going to bring it all together. 
Just let Him do the work. Let Him do the work in you first. Let Him do the work in you first. And then God will line everything else up. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Filled and flooded. Filled and flooded. Filled and flooded. That's it. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name. But just begin to speak that out. Just say, Lord Jesus, fill me now with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I receive it now. I receive you now, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now just let that flow out of your mouth. Listen, just let that come right out of your mouth from down here. Let it bubble all the way up. That's it. Just let it come out. Whatever sounds. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Get out of here. Let it come out of here. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, just open your mouth and begin to speak out. The Lord will fill your mouth when you begin to speak. Yes, yes, yes. And the Shinki just speak it. Hilam Ramba Tum Rambato. Just watch God flow through you. Just speak it. Karo Sotum Romba Mama Kunta. Shinki Lady Didi. Not even after thinking about it. Don't, don't just let it flow. Kika Lambru Sotodo. Hallelujah. That's the power of God all over you, man. <laughs> Getting a little warm in here, huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the fire of God, man. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's just a total surrender. It's just a total surrender. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a total surrender. Hallelujah. 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 Shiva Bramba Baba Mumbo Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just let the Lord touch you for a minute. Hallelujah. Sho Roseke Bandara de Beseke, Tereded, Messia, Taradabo Seke. Just hold that right there in front of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Karabo stampa tarada rabasa. Shil and embramba babaka. That's it. Feel the overflowing. Feel the overflowing. Feel the overflowing. Feel the overflowing in Jesus' name. Feel the overflowing in Jesus' name. Ha. Ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, Rusteke tere de rabasakata. Oh, Robasakata de 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 shtakata. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Never the same. Never the same in His presence. Never the same in His presence. Never the same. Never the same. Every time you encounter His presence, He changes you. Every time you allow Him in to your heart, He changes you. He changes you from glory unto glory, from faith to faith, victory to victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord awesome? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In His presence, there's fullness of joy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go with me to 1 John chapter 3. <clears throat> and I read from verse 13. The Lord laid this on my heart just even in the area of our <clears throat> you know in the area of our worship not just worship as in the sense of of what we sing because how many know again worship comes from our heart amen yeah. and so worship is not only what comes out of our mouth or you know what we do with our hands or whether we dance or whatever those are all part of our can be part of our worship but it, it's what comes from us, amen? Even what, what we surrender to the Lord, what we give to the Lord materially, amen? And so, as I was thinking about this, and it says in verse 13, it says, Do not be surprised and wonder, brethren, that the world detests and pursues you with hatred, right? I mean, no, the, the world is going to hate you, right? Because, why? Because the love of God is on the inside of you, amen? And that's to be expected. But don't be surprised, you know, when... when People mistreat you and abuse you and say all kinds of evil things about you and all that kinds of things. They're going to do that. Amen? This is going to happen. Verse 14 says, "By <clears throat> We know that we have passed out of death unto life by the fact that we love the brethren, our fellow Christians. And he who does not love abides, remains, and is held and kept constantly in spiritual death. But anyone who, and anyone who hates or abominates or detests his brother in Christ, is at heart a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding or preserving within him. By this we come to know, we progressively recognize, the Amplified says, or we perceive to understand the essential love. That's good, isn't it? The essential love. How many know love is essential? Right? If there's one thing that's essential, it's love. Amen. We have, to have, we have to abide in it. Amen. And he says that he laid down his own life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for those who are our brothers in him. Amen. But if anyone has this world's good or resources for sustaining life and sees his brother and fellow believer in need, yet closes his heart of compassion against him, how can the love of God live and remain in him? Right? So what is he talking about? He's not just talking about merely in word, but also in deed. Right? Because love is an action. Right? Love gives. Yeah. Amen. Remember, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave. See, you can, 
you can give actually without loving, right? If any, anybody ever had to give you something that you didn't really feel love attached to it, but they gave it to you anyway, right? But you can't truly love without giving. You can give without loving, but you can't truly love without giving. Because love gives. Love is an action. Love has corresponding deeds attached to it. Amen? Yeah. You know, I, I could tell my wife I love her all day long, but if I never show it, it it's not going to mean much. Amen? And it's easy, right? Because words are, many times words are cheap, right? I mean, words are powerful, right? Words contain life and death. But sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, again, it's, it's easy to say something, but when you have to follow through, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Amen? And so he's telling us this here, you know, and he, of course he even talks about this in James, right? You know, it's like where you, you see somebody, right, that's, that's in need, you know, and you say, oh, well, you know, go, go your way, be warm and fed, you know, but you don't actually do what you can do to be a part of that, then, y- you know, your faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So then he says in verse um, 18, he says, Little children, let us not merely love in theory, again, or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice and in sincerity. By this we shall come to know and perceive and recognize and understand that we are of the truth and can reassure, we can quiet and, and conciliate and pacify our hearts in His presence. Hallelujah. Whenever our hearts are tormenting in tormenting self-accusation or make us feel guilty and condemn us, we are in God's hands. For He is above and greater than our consciences or our hearts. And He knows, He perceives and understands everything. Nothing is hidden from Him. Amen. How many know God knows what's in our heart? He knows what's in our thoughts. Amen. Doesn't, so that's why it's always better to just take it to the Lord and just deal with it. Amen. Because He already knows what's in your heart anyway. He knows what you're thinking about. Right? That always used to just like really keep me, it, it helped for quite a while, keep me on the straight and narrow as a kid, you know, because my parents would always tell me that. Just remember, God knows where you are, what you're doing, what you're thinking, you know. And that, uh, that always, because so it was like I always knew God was with me. You know what I mean? And that was a great thing, though. That was also a great comfort in many ways. Mm-hmm. Amen? Yeah. Because I always knew I could also call out to him for help whenever I needed help. Amen. So he says, verse 21, And beloved, if our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence or complete assurance and boldness before God. Amen. So let me know, your heart always tells you when, when you know you've done something wrong, and your heart, of course, confirms when you know you're in the right. Amen. And that's what he says, you know, so if your heart doesn't condemn you, hey, you're doing good. And, and this goes along with the whole of the walking in love thing, which we're going to get to in just a little bit. Amen. But it's like, you know, your heart, when you, when you know you're not in the right, even if you feel like, well, you know, um, I, I did something about that already. But it's like, you know, it still doesn't sit right in your heart. Right. Well, what is it? your heart is by the Holy Spirit is is telling you, hey, you still need to make this right. Amen. It's like sometimes, you know, it's like we can, we can uh, let's say we've done something um, in the wrong, right? Um, and we've said, you know, we're sorry or, you know, we've, we've tried to make apology or whatever. But sometimes, like, there's a time when we actually need to make restitution as well for what's been, what's been done wrong, amen, or what's been taken, what's been stolen, right? There's restitution many times that needs to be involved. And your heart will tell you that. Verse 22 says, And we receive from Him whatever we ask because we watchfully obey His orders, we observe His suggestions and injunctions, and we follow His plan for us, and He habitually, and habitually practice what is pleasing to Him. That's the bottom line is we want to be pleasing to Him. Amen? And what pleases God? Faith. Faith, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And remember, faith is what? Of the heart. That's why he was talking about, you know, if your heart doesn't condemn you, then you have confidence before God. Then you're in faith. Amen. But how do you know you're not in faith? When your heart is telling you, "Uh, this is not right. Right? I need to to do this or I shouldn't be doing this. Amen. Your heart tells you. It's not rocket science. 
You know, sometimes we're like, well, is, is it really God really telling me to do this? Well, you know, if, it's like, if God's dealing with you about it, then obviously he's trying to tell you something. Amen? Amen. It's not like you didn't have that idea. Right? right? Sometimes we want to complicate things, and you just have to listen to your heart. Amen? What's your heart telling you? Follow your heart. Follow the Holy Spirit on the inside. He says, verse 23, And this is his order, his command, and his injunction, that we should believe, we should put our faith and trust and adhere to, and rely on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and that we should love one another just as he has commanded us. Verse 24, all who keep his commandments, who obey his orders and follow his plan, live and continue to live and stay and abide in him and he in them. They let Christ be a home to them and they are the home of Christ. Who is isn't that powerful? That's the Amplified. They let Christ be a home to them and they are the home of Christ. See, you have to welcome God. You have to welcome Christ into every area of your life. Amen. Amen? I think I talked about that a couple of weeks ago or something, or maybe it was during that conference, you know, about how God doesn't want to just come into your entryway, right? He wants to come into every room in your life. You know, it's like, you ever had somebody just, they invite you in, but they just kind of kept you like in the, in the foyer area or whatever, right? You know, the part that they always keep neat and tidy. But it's like, can't bring you into the kitchen, right? Kitchen's a little untidy. Don't want, don't, wouldn't want Jesus to see that, right? I don't know if I can bring Jesus into my living room, you know. Not sure what's going on in there. Or maybe you can't, you know. Maybe you bring him into the kitchen. Maybe you bring him in the living room, but we're not going in the bedroom. That's like off limits, right? Maybe the bedroom's okay too, but there's that one room, there's that closet that you don't want him to see. You don't want him to touch. But that's exactly where he's going to say, hey, I'd like to go. Well, can I see what's behind that door right there? Yeah. And he already knows it's in there. Yeah. But he wants you to show it to him. Oh, God, it's a mess. I'm embarrassed. I could never. And God says, I'm going to help you clean it out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God wants to help you clean it out. Well, he's not going to sit. He's not going to stand there and laugh at you. No, he's not going to make you feel embarrassed. He's going to help you clean it out. Amen? Amen. He's going to help you give some of that stuff away. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. And it says, And by this we know and understand and have proof that He really lives and makes His home in us by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Isn't that awesome? And see, you say, well, Pastor, how does this really have to do with the offering message? It has everything to do with the offering message. Because, again, it all comes from your heart. Amen? Worship is from your heart. And then even talks about being practical in the area of, you know what, we need to be a blessing. Amen? Yeah. We have to look for opportunities to be a blessing. Amen? I mean, why do you think we're having, you know, doing all these, these outreaches um, here, you know, the end of this month and in November with the, the turkey dinner giveaway and then December with the big winter expo where we're going to be blessing people with even winter gear and all kinds of, you know, things. Because that reaches people. Amen? It reaches people's hearts. Yeah. Jesus always went about doing good. In other words, he always went about helping people, help meet their needs so that they would receive Him. Or at least have an opportunity to receive Him. Amen? It's like, well, what if I do something for somebody and they don't receive it? That's between them and God. But when you give from your heart, when you're obedient to do what God wants you to do, guess what? Then you're good between you and God. And you've done your part. Whether they receive it or not, or whether you feel like it really made an impact, God's going to work on that. It's like people that say, you know, well, you know, I, I used to give to this other church, you know, but, you know, they, they took it and they did something with it they shouldn't have done or whatever the case is, you know, if that's even what really happened. And it's like, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever you give to God, you, you have to remember, you're not giving to a man. You're not giving to a church. You give when you give, you give to God. 
and God, if you if that's if that's your understanding and that's what it has to be, then God sees that and God receives it, and what they've done with it will be between them and God. And if it was misused, God will deal with them. They'll have to stand before God and give an account to that. Amen. But you have to, from your heart, say, Lord, I'm giving this as unto you. Amen? No matter what you do, remember the Bible says, no matter in word or deed, do it all unto the Lord, not as unto men. Amen? Because it's not from man that you want to receive a reward. It's from God, right? It's from God that you want to receive the reward. I don't want man's reward. Man doesn't even have enough of what I need to reward me. Amen. I need some big rewards. Amen. And it's going to come from the Lord. Does God use man? Of course he does. Because he even said, you give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will he cause men to give unto you. So God uses man. But it's not actually coming from that man. It's God who is causing people to give to you. Amen. It's God who does that. Amen. Isn't that powerful? So we're going to give you an opportunity to to sow a seed here this morning and bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord, whatever it is you need to do today. And again, just ask the Lord what He would have you do. Be obedient to do that. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Father, we just thank You again for Your Word. Lord, we thank You. Your Word is true. Father, Your Word doesn't return void. But Lord, I thank You. It does accomplish Lord, that what you sent it out to do. Lord, and it will prosper in the thing for which you sent it. Lord, I just thank you right now for speaking to your people. Lord, you even know what they need to do and what they have need of. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking to them, Lord, according to those things. Lord, I thank you that you would just help us to trust you, Lord, knowing that you already have our back. Lord, you already have it all planned out, how you're going to work it all out. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you, though. Thank you for abundant provision coming to them this week. Thank you for supernatural provision coming to them this week. Thank you, Lord, that as they, Lord, as they give to be a blessing, Lord, you're going to cause people to come out of the woodwork, Lord, just to be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you need an offering, number, just raise your hand. The ushers will get you one. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. One one up here, Ben. Thank you, Lord. God is so faithful. Amen. He is so faithful. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You know, they might have the quilts over there, but we have the comforter. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) I thought you'd all enjoy that. (laughs) Glory to God. I love the comforter we have on our bed. Oh, I'm telling you what, that thing is just, it's amazing. One of those down comforters, you know, it keeps you, it doesn't matter if we leave the window open. I mean, your, your nose might get cold, but the rest of you is set. It's nice. Thank you, Jesus. The great comforter, amen? The Holy Spirit is our helper, our intercessor, our strengthener, our standby, advocate. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who's expecting big things this week? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Always be expecting. It's part of your faith. Faith in expectation. God's not only going to use you, but He's going to bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody ready to give? Hallelujah. Ushers, go ahead. You can pass those. 
Glory to God. I want to just give you a couple of quick announcements real quick here. Lots of good things happening. And in case you're wondering, this service today is actually not, we're not live right now. We are recording, but we're not live right now. So if you go back on after today and you were going to share it or whatever, please do. But it'll probably take us, um, how soon will we have it up? By tomorrow or? Tomorrow. By tomorrow, yeah. We'll have it up by tomorrow. So be looking for that. We'll post it back up on Facebook and on YouTube as well. But um, good things. One thing I want to make mention of is if you go to our website, um, and you'll also be able to find this through the app. You know, If you don't know, we have a church app. Um, and, you, and you can download it right from our website, rivermsp.com. In fact, there's a little red alert at the top of the, uh, the website that says, you know, download our, our new app. Um, but so what you'll find, though, if you go to click on messages on our website, uh, just the other day I finally uploaded the By His Stripes uh, healing scriptures on the website. And so also there's the link to the YouTube uh, video, which is the audio of the scriptures being read. Um, but then if you look, I think, below that, you'll also see a, a link for, a, you'll click on it, and you'll be able to open up a PDF of, all, of the list of all the healing scriptures throughout the Bible from, like, Genesis to Revelation. So um, I was going to print those, but I'm telling you, it's like so many pages <laughs> that I thought, you know, it's just easier to put it on the website than people can have access to it, like, even wherever you're at. And, and you can download it, print it for yourself if you want, but um, it is available now on the website. So make use of that and... Anytime you, you know of someone yourself struggling with any kind of a physical thing, pull up the word, amen, and start speaking it. Start speaking it. Start speaking it. Let that word get down deep in your heart, amen? amen. Hallelujah. And then, sweetheart, is there anything you wanted to say about, about this Saturday, real quick? It's right there by you, the mic. It should be on the... Um on the desktop? On the desktop, in the like right, top, left, left, top corner. But, um, and then I also have a couple of um, little printouts in the back if somebody wants to grab it. But um, this coming Saturday, we're going to have for ladies only um, a craft get together. And so we're going to make girls. just the girls. We're going to make, yep, there we go. There we go. So we're going to make a pumpkin. I think I, I've talked about it a little bit, but I know we have new visitors all the time. Um, and so we're going to make a centerpiece. We're going to make it together. And so if you guys haven't reached out to me, let me know that you're coming. We would love to have you invite your friends and, and family. And if you want to bring your daughter or, or your grandma or mom, um, we still have some spots open. And we'll, we're going to make this beautiful uh, centerpiece arrangement together. We're going to paint. We're going to glue. And Tracy's going to take us all through the steps. So it's not going to be complicated. We have all the supplies. We do. We want a fellowship, so we ask everyone to bring uh, like a dessert or maybe like an appetizer, like something finger food to share just for yeah. us to kind of paint with one hand and eat with the other, <laughs> yes. right? Is that how I know it's going to be a ton of fun. So I really, really want to encourage you guys to come out. Let me know if you're interested. And it's this coming Saturday, the 23rd. Yep at 10 a.m. and it's going to be right here we're going to be back in uh, we're going to be back in our mm -hmm. room right yeah mm -hmm. we're going to be back in our main room and that's where we're going to be so awesome awesome thank awesome thank you sweetheart also good things happening with the houses of joy um we had our multiplication party uh here last wednesday and uh, that was a fun time great turnout and uh so we have we have as of this wednesday we'll be in the new homes and so uh, if I haven't spoken to you about where you could, which place you can go to, please see me uh, after the service or get in touch with me before Wednesday, and uh, and we'll let you know. We've got Jerry's place, and then we've got um, Dave and Kristen's place with Jenna and, and everybody. So it's going to be awesome, and uh, we're continuing, almost done with our series on the fruit of the spirit, which has been really, really, really powerful. I think uh, we just have to come and find out what this week is all about. So which fruit it is, which fruit you're partaking of. Amen. And, uh, but I'm really excited about that. We'll be visiting these groups as well, so you will see us. It's not like you're not going to see us at House of Joe anymore. You will see us. But um, we're very excited about that, and uh, good things are happening. Amen? Amen? So go and be a part of House of Joy Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Um, soul winning Saturdays. Uh, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do. Actually, I'm not sure how we're going to do. We actually might be doing soul winning this Saturday in the evening because of the ladies thing. So um, we'll, we'll put that up on the, we'll post that up so you guys know what's going on with that. KBF is obviously coming up then the fourth, uh, the fourth Tuesday of this month. So that's going to be not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. I think it's the 
what day is that? 20 something. 26th? 26th. 26th, yep. KBF the 26th. Come be a part of that. Good stuff. We got into some really great practical things uh, last, last Tuesday. Uh, so I want to encourage you, invite your, your friends, your business associates, colleagues, people in sales. They're going to be blessed by that. And then October 30th, man, this is coming quick, is our harvest party at the rec center here in town. So that's from 3.30 to 5.30. There is a sign-up sheet at the back table. If you can help us um, that afternoon, being a part, help us man a game, you know, do things with the, you know, helping with the kids and that kind of thing. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to have an opportunity to share the gospel with people. So there's also a, you saw the wagon as you came in the back there. That is not for you to sit in and get a wagon. That's for candy donations. So if, you, if you'd like to bring some, some candy donations by, please feel free to do that. We meant to have that out last week, um, but uh, we'll have plenty of candy one way or the other. Amen. So. Bring in the candy. It's going to be a great time. And then the 13th of, of uh, November, keep this in your prayers, the Litchfield Thanksgiving Outreach is Saturday, November the 13th from 2 to 4. So again, please make plans to come and help us with that. It's going to be awesome. We're believing God for 250, to be able to take care of 250 families um, this year uh, with, a, with a small turkey and then some of the, you know, this will, it'll be a, like a pre-bagged meal, you know, with like a box of potatoes and a can of veggies and like cranberry sauce and a dinner roll type thing. So um, it's going to be really awesome. Come and be a part of that. We're going to have music. It's almost going to actually be like a little mini service where we're going to just, I mean, we're going to get people into the presence of God. It's going to be awesome, and we're going to believe people are going to be touched, and we're going to do an altar call. It's going to be powerful. So come and be a part of that. Help us out with that, and then, of course, distributing the food at the end. Um, and then, at the, and then um, in December, we have our River Winter Expo, December the 11th from 2 to 4.30 at the big um, gymnasium there at the fairgrounds. I think it's the commercial building at the fairgrounds. And that's going to be a lot of fun. We're still putting some details to that as far as um, what kind of exhibits we're going to have, but there's even going to be some vendors. Of course, we're going to have some fun things for the kids. Like I said, we're going to be believing God to give away coats and hats and gloves and things like that for people in need, but also some fun stuff that will just draw people in, draw in the guys, draw in the ladies. I think we're going to try and get them. You ever seen those mechanical bulls that you can ride on, right? I think I'm going to try and get one of those. I've done that before, and I tell you, it is a lot harder than it looks. But I stayed on for a long time. I can't remember how long it was. I, I basically stayed on until, like, it was several minutes. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I don't know. I tell you one thing is it really makes your legs sore because you are, like, wrapping your legs around this bowl because all you got is a rope to hold on to. You know what I mean? Can't you control the speed with how, like, violently they're bossed? Yeah, yeah, they can. You don't, but they do. So, yeah, if they turn it up. If they turn it up, it gets a little, it's, they can throw you up. There's going to be just some other fun things we'll be doing there. So right now I've got planned for a, for a, a fishing pro to come down, talk to the guys about fishing, ladies about fishing. It's going to be really, really cool. So um, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good things are happening. Good things are happening. Who's excited about what God is doing? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're all a part of it. Hallelujah. Well, who enjoyed our whole series on the gifts of the Spirit this last, what, nine, eight or nine weeks, whatever it was? Awesome. And um, it was, I'm, I'm so glad we, we, got, we got into that. And uh, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. And so if you go back with me, actually, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to go to the end of the chapter there. And, you know, I, originally when, I, when God spoke to me about doing the gifts of the Spirit, I didn't know what I was going to do after that, of course. But, of course, God already had it laid out, right, in His Word. And this is what he says in verse 31 of chapter 12. He says, But earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces and the higher gifts and the choices graces. Whew, man. <laughs> Glory to God. And he says, And yet I will show you still a more excellent way, one that is far, one that is better by far, 
and the highest of them all, love. Everyone say love. love. Hallelujah. I'm getting messed up today, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Glory to God. So, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. So I may know everything works by love, yes. right? Yes. Love is the motivation. Love is the key to everything. Love is the key to everything. If you don't have love, if, you're, if your motivation isn't love, that's, again, one of the ways you can, you know, recognize, like, is this God leading me to do something? Well, look at, you always have to check the motive and the intent of your heart, right? If the motivation isn't love, and you can tell when it's, you know, fueled by, I'm not talking about your own, you know, you, you're selfish, because really when it's selfish, it's, it really, it comes down to the opposite, it's lust, Right? There's a huge difference between love and lust. Lust is, is what your flesh desires, right? And that's just not even the sexual things. I'm talking about, like, you know, lust is actually just an intense craving, intense desire to have something. So there's different types of, you know, you can lust after things, right? You know, you can lust after whatever. You can just, after having whatever for yourself. But God wants us, but remember, it's, love is the opposite. Love gives. So love says, I have to have, I have to have. Or I'm not happy. No. But love gives, amen, and it's freeing. It's actually freedom. Amen. amen. It's freedom. Galatians 5, 6. And so we're going to come back to chapter 13 here in just a second. But Galatians 5, 6, it says, If we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. So remember that. Your faith only works through love. As I said, if it's not motivated by love, if the intent isn't love, your faith is actually not, it, it's not going to work. You could say, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe, you know, like, I'm going to believe for this. But if that's just, again, your, your natural desire, but it's not... God's not motivating you to even believe Him for that. It's not going to, it's not faith. Amen? It's not faith. Everything in the kingdom of God works by and through love. Jesus' whole motivation for everything He did was love. So casting out the devils, it's all, it's all motivated by love. Amen? Again, the gifts of the Spirit, it's all, you know, as the Spirit wills. Why? Why? Because the Holy Spirit motivates us through love. Amen? Romans 5.5 5 tells us that God's love member has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So sometimes, you know, we, we get this idea that, um, oh, it's, you know, man, I, I don't know, this is this walking in love thing, it's really tricky, or, you know, how can I do this? How can I overcome this? Well, you have to learn to, that's why you have to learn to yield and rely on the Holy Spirit because He's the one that's brought the love of God into our hearts by His presence. And how many know God's presence is His love? His love is His presence. Amen. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13 here then. This is so powerful. He says, If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, that reasoning intentional and spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Oh my goodness. Have you ever heard something like, Somebody beating on a gong, right? Or just like a symbol. Yeah, like somebody, you know, it's like it's totally just not in sync with anything, right? And it's just a noise. There's nothing worse than a repeated noise after noise after noise after noise. Right? It just drives you crazy. <laughs> it drives you crazy, right? And that's what, so it's like you can have, you know, you can have this gift or that gift or whatever, but if it's not motivated through love, if it doesn't come through love, it's just going to be like an irritation. Amen? And I mean, oh, God doesn't want us to irritate one another, right? He wants us to help complete one another. Amen? 
be a blessing to one another. Right? So when it comes by love through the Holy Spirit, it's going to uplift, it's going to encourage, it's going to edify, right? Remember, even knowledge. Knowledge, we're going to get to that in a second, but knowledge puffs up. You know, you people, they, oh, I know this. And you have all these people, they want to like study the Bible, right? They want to break it all down and get into that. And that's all good. But if it's not, if the motivation isn't actually to know love, to know God, knowledge just puffs up. It, in other words, it makes you prideful and arrogant. But love edifies. Love edifies. It encourages. It strengthens. Amen. Verse 2, he says, Even if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and I understand all the secret truths and the mysteries and possess all this knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I, I can even remove mountains. Jesus said, you know, if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, right? And you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe the things that you say will come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say, right? Mark eleven twenty three. 23. But he says, he goes a step further. Because it's great. We need, to have, we need to have that kind of faith that we can move mountains out of the way. Amen? We can change circumstances. We have to have that kind of faith. We're not taken away from that kind of faith. Amen? But he says, if it's not done by love, what will happen is, and this is what's happened to, to, you know, and we talked a little bit about this during the, the, the gifts, the different gifts. But what will happen is you'll learn how to operate in the power of God, but if you, get, you get off track without love, and you're going to sidetrack yourself, and you can even end up shipwrecking your faith. Amen? So he says, but if I don't have love, God's love in me, I am nothing. A useless nobody. Oh, I mean, no, those are some strong words. A useless nobody. I don't want to be a useless nobody. I mean, like being useful. Right? The Bible even tells us be useful, right? Be fruitful. No, I want to know I've impacted some people. Amen. And I have, praise God, <laughs> you know, God, but by God's help, but only by God's love working through me. But think about that, you know, you, you, you got to take stock of your life and think, okay, you know, whose life has, have I really impacted, at least in some way, right, because of God's love in me flowing through me. We all have to take stock of that, right, and think, you know, who, who have I, you know, even from your children, you know, to people you work with, to other family members, to, you know, other people in the church or whatever the case is. I guarantee you there's somebody. Amen. But God desires, right, that we bear more and more excellent fruit. Amen. He says in verse 3, Even if I dole out all I have to the poor in providing food. Right? And we just talked about that, right? That's good. We want to do that, but we want it to be through love. And if I surrender my body even to be burned in order that I may glory, but I have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. So he says, even if you become a martyr, you're going to gain nothing. If it wasn't motivated by the Holy Spirit, if it wasn't motivated through love, you're going to gain nothing. I remember there was this, um, I think I shared this with the students um, the other week, and uh, there was this young guy in Bible school a couple of years ago, and uh, he had come through first year, and he was really struggling, been through a really tough time in his life, actually, and um, just, the kid was just like all over the place, you know, he's in his early 20s, and just, man, he just, like, his mind would just race, and just like, like super hyper and everything, and uh, so they put him with me, because basically he had, <laughs> he had actually, <laughs> he had been to a bunch of the other pastors already and they, different people had worked with him and stuff like that. And, and then so finally I get my crack at him. And in fact, I probably even asked for, I, I even probably said, well, why don't you send him to me for a little bit? We'll see what we can do. And so, not that I'm better than anybody else, but, you know, it was just like, okay, this, like, I got some ideas on how to bring this guy down to a level head, you know. And so, uh, so he's just working with me for a while, and, and things were going good. And, but he had this one thing he would say. He'd be like, Pastor Dave, he's like, 
I really feel, you know, because he was struggling with different things, just, you know, living for God and everything like that. <coughs> and, uh, and he said, you know, Pastor Dave, I really feel like, you know, like someday I could be a martyr for Jesus, you know. And I was like, wow, that's like, that's great. But I said, how about this? How about first we live for him? Amen. <laughs> I was like, it's great that you want to die for the Lord, but first you have to learn to live for him. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? You know, it's like, oh, it's, it's easy to be like, okay, just, you know, I believe in Jesus, take me now. There's a whole other thing to live for him by laying down your life, by dying to your, dying to your flesh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the, that's the first part of, of dying that the Lord wants us to grab a hold of and learn how to walk in. Amen. Paul said, you know, I've been crucified with Christ, right? Therefore, I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So you have to always remember, you know, you have to reason yourself, I'm dead. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to this world. I'm alive in Christ. I'm alive in Christ by the Holy Spirit who lives in me. He gave me this new life. Amen. He's given me this new life. So it doesn't matter what we do, the kind of accomplishments, accolades, or whatever we think we can get, if it's not motivated by love, it means nothing. Then he goes down to break it on, break it on down, right? And I love how they break it down in the Amplified Bible. Verse 4. And, you know, you see this all the time. You know, a lot of you could probably quote this. You know, you see it on plaques all the time. You know, love is patient, love is kind, all these different things. It's great to have on your wall if you apply it, amen, every day. But again, it means nothing if you put it up on a plaque on a wall, but you don't actually work on cultivating it, amen? God wants us to cultivate those seeds of love, right? Remember, love is the fruit of the Spirit. We went over that several weeks back in, in House of Joy. As I passionate, I don't know, I just really have a hard time loving well, what you're saying is you have a hard time yielding to the love of God. Because the more that you yield to the love of God, the more that love will grow for people. Amen? It will grow in you. It will grow in you. Amen? How I many know if you plant a seed and you just like leave it in some really harsh conditions and you just totally neglect it, it's probably going to die. But how I many know you can take... Even in some, some difficult conditions, if you nurture that thing right, you water it, you add maybe other things to the soil right, and you fertilize it, you know, that thing's going to grow. Yeah. It's going to thrive. You know, it's like they say, you know, well, the grass is greener on the other side. No, it's actually not. It's never greener on the other side. It's greener on the side that you water. Yeah. Right? The grass is always greener on the side that you water. Always remember that. Because we always think, well, you know, if I, if I can just change my, my outward, then my inward will be happy. It'll never work like that. It doesn't work. You have to allow God to change the inside. Amen? Amen. Then the outward will begin to turn around. So he says, love endures. It endures long. Anybody ever felt like you've had to endure long? Maybe some of you in some of my services had to endure long. That's good, right? You have to learn to endure long. You have to be patient. It says it's patient and kind, right? Long-suffering. We don't like to suffer. Our flesh doesn't want to suffer, right? Your flesh like, begins to scream when it feels like it's suffering. I don't want to do that. like a little gremlin in there, like, Rah! what are you going to do? You got to put that thing to death. And the only way you can put that to death is by, again, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Say, so, no, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient through this. I'm going I'm to allow God to work in me through this. It builds character, right? Something that you can see a lot of this world doesn't have. His godly character, because it was never, it was never 
taught to them and it was never disciplined into them. All these things actually have a lot to do with godly discipline. And that's, again, another word we don't like to hear. I don't want to hear discipline, you know. But without discipline, you're not going to yield, the Bible says in Hebrews uh, 13, I think it is, or Hebrews uh, 12, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. If you want good fruit in your life, you're going to have to put yourself into, into God's discipline. Amen? And that even involves, you know, spiritual authority. I mean, understand that. I mean, if you really hang around, you get involved, like, you're going to find yourself in some disciplines that maybe your flesh doesn't always like. Right. I'm not saying you're always going to hate it. I'm just saying, you know, because the more you grow in God, you actually should enjoy the things of God. Amen? Being a part of the things of God. Otherwise, there's something really wrong with you. Amen. Hello. Just make that clear. Amen. But uh, trust me, you know, I can take you through some stories, you know, of just being put into, into spiritual discipline of my flesh that I did not enjoy. I did not enjoy. But you know what? I had to forget about how I felt at the moment and look at what I was shooting for. It wasn't about the way I felt. That was about the vision for my life. What did God call me to do? And if that's where I'm going, if that's what I want, then you know what? I'm going to have to deal with this. Amen? But, you know, we live in such a, a, a you know, cater to your flesh society. The world just tells you, do whatever you want. Do, it, do whatever feels good. Make yourself. You deserve it. You deserve it. You don't deserve nothing. The only thing we deserve is death. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. That actually came to me this morning. Thank you, Lord, for fitting that in. That's all we deserve. The only the, the great things that come to us, it's all by the grace of God. It's all by the mercy and the grace of God. That you're even sitting here in your right mind today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sitting here alive and breathing. Hallelujah. I mean, really, you know, I know some people, you know, it's funny, you know, you see this, I thank God that I woke up this morning. Well, yeah, you know what? God designed you to wake up every morning, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, we should thank God for every day. Amen. We should thank God for, the, for every day that we have to live for him. That's a live for yourself. It's miserable living for yourself. I tried all that. My God. Because you know what? Yourself will never be satisfied. Remember, your flesh is a pig. The flesh is like a pig, and it wants what it wants, yeah. and it's never satisfied. And, well, I'm just going to satisfy my flesh for a little bit. You better be careful. You're on a slippery slope in that flesh, because when you continue to give the flesh what it wants, it's going to just crave more. Mm -hmm. Give me more. I need another cookie. <laughs> One's not enough. Well, two's all right. Well, I might as well have three. I'll just go for four. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. I might as well just eat half the whole box, you know. <laughs> right? Because you're like, because then, then you start feeling better about yourself. Well, I might as well just eat them all. Right? <laughs> no, we've all been there before, right? right? No, don't try and justify yourself. Just repent right away. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. tell, your, tell your friend, tell your spouse, hide the cookies from me, please. Only give me one or two. Amen. No, I could do that. I could say, you know what? I could eat a whole box of cookies and it's not even going to affect me. Do you know what I mean? It's just not. I don't know why, but it's just not. <laughs> but even still, I don't do that. You know why? Because then after I eat them all, I still feel bad. I'm like, oh, you know, it like almost puts me in a sugar coma. I don't need that. Amen. Well, you got to take care of your body. Amen? Because God gave you this body. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. So you got to look after it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't know how I got on that. But. Somebody's craving cookies. 
be good this afternoon. I love pie. You know, we had some pie last night. But, you know, I don't need two and three pieces of pie. I mean, at Thanksgiving, I might have two pieces of pie. But, like, you know, it's like a couple, it's like a couple times a year. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. You have to put yourself in discipline. And that's why God, God puts, you know, authority around us and spiritual authority in our lives. Why? Because he knows we can't do it in ourself. Yes. He knows we can't do it in another self, and we won't. So he says, you've got to submit yourself. Yes. Amen? Let me just read you a quick scripture. Go keep finger in 1 Corinthians 13. Lest you think this is my idea. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 and verse 17. And in fact, if you go back to chapter 12, you read the whole chapter, we'll have to get to that another day. <clears throat> but he says, Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually, recognizing their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual wel welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. Amen. Hebrews 13, 17. So he says, you have to. He says, why? Because God puts them over you, right? To be able to help mold you, shape you, and to see blind spots that you don't see. I may even notice you had some blind spots, right? And that's why, because you have to understand, as a, as a pastor, God gives us insight into things that, that we can see in people many times that you don't see. Amen? And sometimes it's not even that you don't see it. It's sometimes that you don't want to see it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Pastor Dave, you don't have to say that. Yes, I do. Right? How many of you know there's some things that's like, it's like you know you got to work on, but you don't want to work on it until yeah. somebody comes along, right, like your spouse, and tells you, well, you need to work on this, or you need to change that. You need to do something about that. And it's like, err, right? Then it's like, you know, Dracula wants to come out. <sighs> the flesh. That old man. Nope. The Bible says, kill. Yeah. Kill that old man. Amen? Amen? So he says, let's get back to love now. Let's talk about love again, Pastor Dave. Love is never envious, nor boils over with jealousy. You know why you don't have to worry about being envious or, or jealous? Because if you just follow God, God's got, the, God's, got, God's got what you want. He's got the best for you. Yeah. Amen? You don't have to be jealous of what somebody else has. Just ask God. Amen? And if it's going to be good for you, He's going to give it to you. That's right. he, he's, the Bible says, no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. Thank you, Lord. Amen? And then He says it's not boastful. It's not vainglorious. Boy, there's so much vanity in the world, huh? Vanity, vanity, everything. They even got magazines for it. Vanity Fair, you know. Vanity, vanity, vanity. There's a whole book in the Bible about it. All is vanity. Notice when you think about it, when it's all said and done, you know, what is it really? What does it matter? You know, we do all these things, right? Try and make ourselves look like this, accomplish this, to please people that we don't even like or that don't even like us. For what? Right? Just please God. For him, be a man pleaser. Just please God. He's the only one that really matters. Amen. And listen, I've had to deal with that over the years. I've had to, you know, God help me not be a man pleaser, you know. Because like, you want to make people happy, right? You want to see people happy. But you're not responsible for making everybody around you happy. Amen. Thank God. All you got to do is do what God wants you to do. Sometimes people are not going to be happy with what you do and what you say. Not everybody's going to like your opinion, right? And that's okay. You've got you to get used to, you know, somebody disagrees with something you said. Then don't get, 
Well, you know, forget about it. Who cares? Everybody's got armpits, right? Opinions are like armpits. Everybody has them, and some of them stink. <laughs> Amen. That's just part of, you know. I mean, thank God we all, you know, we see things differently, right? We need differences of opinion. You can't just be a yes man. They made some stupid movie about that years ago, you know, yes man. And the guy was just like, yes to everything, and then, you know, turned out really, really bad for him, obviously. <laughs> At first it seemed like it was going good, and then it just, like, really turned bad. I don't even remember how they went. I think it just got really stupid, so praise God. But it does not display itself haughtily. It's not conceited or arrogant and inflated with pride. So, you know, you ever been around somebody with a big head, right? They think they got it all figured out. They think they, they're that, they're God's gift to, you know, creation. Some guys think they're God's gift to women, you know. Some women think they're God's gift to men. All that kind of stuff. It's like, hey, this. You're not, yeah, exactly. You're not all that in a bag of chips, you know. Amen. It's not inflated with pride. That's why you need people to come along and burst your bubble every now and again. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about it to the point where they, you know you feel depressed or whatever, but oh my gosh, if you feel depressed because, you know, somebody burst your bubble, again you're looking at the wrong person. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You got your eyes on man instead of on Jesus. Yeah. That I'm telling you, that's one of the biggest problems. Is people always got their eyes on, on some person, right? It's either going to make them happy or not make them happy. Some person that's either going to be their breakthrough, or if it doesn't work out, you know what am I going to do? Man is not your breakthrough, right? Man is not your source. You have to make God your source. So it doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter if this person comes through for you. If they don't come through for you, it doesn't matter. Why? Because then God's got another plan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God's got another plan. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll never forget. I'll show you this quick story. The Lord reminded me about it a few years back. <clears throat> I had always wanted to, um, we would have these, uh, at the ministry in Tampa, we had these department head meetings where we'd go over different things. And, and I'd been wanting to, uh, for actually I think a couple of years, I've been wanting to create this like, this welcome video for the church, right? Of, you know, it's like, welcome to the river, what, just a quick snapshot, a couple of minutes of like what the river's all about, right, type of a thing. And uh, man, I thought it'd be so cool, right? And we can we can promote it, and you know, and even a way that you know visitors can see you quickly, you know, even before they come or whatever, what the river's all about. And I, and I mean, right? Don't you think that's a great idea? A lot of churches have that. Well, it was like when I had brought it up, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I don't know. It was just kind of like it just never happened. It was kind of shot down or whatever. I don't remember even why. Um, it just never happened. It wasn't a priority or whatever. And so um, a couple of years go by and we're sitting in a meeting and I don't remember if I'd even just been talking about it because for some reason it was just, I don't know, maybe you remember if there was some other things under my skin at the same time, you know, because it always seems like there's always something else under your skin, right? And then it's like something else that comes up, right? That really gets in, in under your skin and then it's just like, it's, it's going to come out, right? And so, and I've always kept a level head, you know, in meetings and stuff like that, you know. Um, I'm pretty good about, you know, keeping my cool and whatever. And one of the other young ladies that was now in the, the productions department in charge of making videos or whatever, they come with like, hey, what if we, they said, they said to Pastor Eric, you know, he's running the meeting. They're like, hey, what if we make this video? <laughs> you know, it, it's exactly what I wanted to do. And they're like, make this video, this welcome video and everything. And Pastor Eric's like, that's a great idea. We need to get that done. And I'm sitting here like, my flesh just began to like, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, and I, and I shouldn't have said anything. You know, I should have just let it go. 
And I tell you what, for whatever reason, I was just like, I'm just going to let this out right now. And I was like, I was like, Pastor, excuse me. It's like, I had that idea like years ago and nobody wanted to do anything about it. And now like, yeah, I think it's great. We should do it. But I had like an attitude about it. You know what I mean? And just kind of like that, I probably even came across a little, you know, a little more like, and all of a sudden everybody's kind of like, oh, geez, like never seen Pastor Dave like that, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was like, and then I realized what I've done and I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I kind of felt embarrassed and I'm like, and then Pastor Eric, I mean, <laughs> I think he actually felt sorry for me because I think he probably, you know, he knows what I've gone through sometimes even with stuff like that. And, and he was like, he's like, you know, Pastor David, you're right. He's like, <laughs> and really, he shouldn't even said I was right because I was wrong. I knew I was in the wrong. But he was like, we need to get that done. He's like, I want you to make that a high priority, you know. And then they did, and here's the funny thing. So then they did it, right? We put it all together, got people to, to walk through and everything like that, create the video, and we had it all created, and we put it on CDs and everything, or DVDs or whatever for people to give out. And you know what? It was like the biggest flop ever. It, like, <laughs> it was pointless. It was just worthless. Like, I don't know if anybody ever watched that thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure a few people did. But it didn't, in other words, it didn't really produce the fruit that I had intended it for it to produce. And you know why? Because we did it with the wrong attitude. We did it because my flesh wanted to do it. Not because it was even a God thing at the time. But see, when it's a God thing, it'll actually produce fruit. It'll flourish, right? But whatever's of the flesh is just going to be like a waste of time and frustration. Amen? Believe me. And I've seen other things like that. So he says, it is not rude. It's not unmannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. Right? Have you ever had somebody tell you, well, that's very becoming on you, right? You want things to be becoming, but you don't want to act unbecomingly. We don't have to be unmannerly. Amen? You know, I don't know why it is. It's like when we try and get, you know, especially when we are, we're trying to prove our point or we're trying to get truth across to somebody, right? It's like we feel like we just have to, be rude about it, you know, and stick it in your face. Generally, that is not going to reach anybody. Right. It's not going to help anybody, right? right? You, you might get to say your, your two piece. You might get to say your words, but it's not going to help, no. right? How many times do you ever feel like you can receive something that somebody says when they're just rude about it? Never. No, you can't receive it because you're not even thinking about what they're saying. You're just thinking about you're feeling like with the attitude with which they said it. Yeah. Amen? So it doesn't matter what you said. You could have said, yabba dabba doo, yabba dabba doo. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Amen? But that's why Paul talked about, you know, speaking the truth in love, right? Speaking the truth in love. So it's like, Think about this. If the point that you feel you have to get across is really, really that important and you really actually want people to hear it, then it's not about the fact that, you know, I need to be heard. It's about the fact that they need to hear it. And many times that's the problem is we feel like I need to be heard. But it's not the fact that you need to be heard. It's that maybe they actually do need to hear what you're going to say. So guess what? You've got to, you've got to package it in love. Otherwise, it's worthless. Otherwise, like you just packaged it in dung. Here you go. Receive what I'm saying. Get away from me, right? <laughs> but think about it. You know, you package something in love that's even hard to receive, right? What do they say? A spoonful of sugar, right? Helps the medicine go down. You package it in love, and people are going to be like, okay, like maybe I don't want to hear this, but, you know, they're bringing, the way that they, they, they can tell the intention of your heart is because they love you. Because they actually want you to, to be helped, right, or to benefit. True? Yeah. So you have to think, you know, what way, what, what's the motivation? It's like, you know, you can try and beat an idea into people or you can, you know, the, the greatest... Um, 
or the coaches, you know, will tell you, you know, it's, it's the way they can motivate their team, motivate their people, and inspire them, right, to be who they need them to be. Or you can just have somebody that, you know, yells at you all the time. Barks orders at you. Get this done. Well, anybody can do that. But can you inspire people? Can you motivate people through love to bring about a change? That's what we need. Amen. Jesus didn't go around barking orders at, at his disciples or his people. Amen. And we've all done that. I've done that. I've barked orders at people. Tell my kids. If I've told you once, I told you, get your, you know, take care of this, get this done. But we get frustrated a lot of times, right? Because we're trying to get a message across and we just think, well, you know, I, I, I got to say it a few more times. Well, maybe it's, it has nothing to do with how many times you say it, but the way you say it. Right? <laughs> We've all heard that before. It's not what you said, it's how you said it. And it's true. Because people more so feel what you say, not just hear what you say. I mean, there's, it's the spirit behind your words, right? Jesus even said, my words are spirit, amen, and they are life. So what spirit is behind your words? What, what, what spirit is your, are, are your words carrying? Your words are containers. They carry life. They either carry, again, love, joy, peace, right? Faith, amen, blessing. Things are going to uplift people. Or your words carry doom, gloom, doubt, fear, antagonism, hatred. They carry something. Your words are carrying something every time you speak them. That's why consider. That's why the Bible says be quick to, to, uh, to listen and slow to speak, slow to get offense and, take, and get angry. Right? I think that's in Ephesians. We have to be quick to listen. Do I really need to say this right now? I really want to say it. But is this going to be good if I say it? Probably not. That's why the Bible says, you know, Proverbs talks about, you know, taming, taming your mouth, right? He who guards his, his lips guards his own life, right? All kinds of things like that. We've got to learn to zip this lip. I used to tell this, I would tell this to the students in Tampa a lot. I say, you know, sometimes... You know what the most anointed thing you can do is? Shut up. Shut your mouth. Sometimes that is the most anointed thing you can do is just zip it. Let it go. And then just let it go. Because if it really needs to be said, there'll be an opportunity to say it. But the proper opportunity right? The proper time. Amen? Amen? Let's get back into this here for a minute. We're losing time. He says, <clears throat> love, God's love in us does not insist on its own right or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not fret, uh, touchy, fretful, or resentful, and it takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Ooh, that's a lot right there. It's not self-seeking. It doesn't insist on its own rights or its own way. But man, we always want to get our own way, don't we? <laughs> My wife and I used to have that trouble a lot of times just driving down the road in the car, you know, especially in a bigger city where it's like, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to get somewhere, right? And, you know, I'd be driving, she'd be like, and, I want, and I'm just thinking, I'm, just, I'm not even thinking, I'm just going to go this way the way I would normally go or whatever. And she's like, why are you going this way? She says, go this way, it's quicker. I'm like, you know, and then I'd be like, no, there's, you know, there's more lights that way or whatever. It's like, no, it's shorter that, you know. It's like, whatever. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. You know what I mean? It, but we would get into big arguments about just which way we're going to get to church. You know what I mean? And it's like, give me a break. And that would happen like 
you know, I'm just like, no, I'm telling you, it's not shorter. You know, it's like time it out, right? You know, and all these, and we time it out, map it out. You know, how many miles, whatever. Jeez. And so finally, like, I just came to the conclusion. <laughs> we finally came to agreement. Like I tell you, what, when I drive, I get to choose the way. When you drive, you can go whichever way you want to go, and I won't say anything about it. And so, and then finally, I even got to the point where I was just like, even if I was driving and she just made a suggestion, I was like, sure, let's do that. That sounds great. That will be awesome. Let's just go that way. No, and I realized, you know, that's true love because it's when you lay down your own right in your own way. Yeah. Especially when it doesn't really matter. It's, it's trivial. Right. There's so many things, you know, we can, oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, we've had so many arguments about things that are just trivial, just stupid stuff. It doesn't amount to a hill of beans, right? And all it is is the enemy just trying to attack, you know, and weasel his way in. That's all it is. It means nothing. You know, it's like if you're going to have an, at least if you're going to have an argument, at least it, let it be about something important. Right. And, then, and then obviously work it up, but do it in love. You know, you can have disagreements. You know, you have to learn how to like, you know, fight by the rules. You know what I mean? Play fair. And then don't make it personal. Too many times what happens when you start fighting is because, you know, you feel like it was personal. And then so you're going to return injury for injury. And that's not what love is. Amen? Amen? You can have a difference of opinion, right? People are going to have a difference of opinion. I mean, probably 50% of the time or more, you know, people are going to disagree with you. Yeah. That's just how life is. So what? Yeah, just make, come up with a plan, you know? Hey, guess what? That's why a lot of times I just ask you, hey, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go eat? Oh, I don't know. And then it's like, well, how about we go here? No, I don't want to go there. I don't like that place. You know, you know and then it's like, it's like you give them the option, and then it's like, no, you know, and then you're fighting about, like, even though you tried to, like, whatever. And it's just like, because really you want to say something, you know, but it's like you don't want to say it. You know, you're trying to, trying to be kind and courteous, whatever. It's like, it doesn't really matter. It's just food. You know what I mean? It's just food. That's the problem sometimes is we're, we're so spoiled. We have so many options, right? We're so spoiled. We're so used to getting our own way when we don't get our own way. Like we throw all our toys out of the cot, you know. It's like, you know, a kid can have like six toys around him, but it's that other toy, that, that one toy that the other kid has. I don't care about any of these. I want that one because he's got that one. And the kid's not even really understanding all that. But it's like from a little child, you know what I mean, that's how it is. And it's not much different. We just get older and our toys get bigger and more expensive and whatever. It's not much different. Yeah. We see something, somebody says, well, I want that. And then I'm, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get that. <laughs> We're just like big babies that, you know, need some discipline. <laughs> We need that. Amen. Amen. You're never too old for a spanking. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. One time my, my pastor said that he said, you know, we should just he said we should just set up a, a room where people or adults can come and get spanked when they know they need to get spanked. And one of the other associate pastors was like, No, don't do it. She's like, people will actually come. Don't do it. <laughs> I can believe it too. Some people would come. I don't, I, don't know, I don't think I'd want that job. I already have that job, so it's just in a different way. I just can't do it physically. You know. But, you know, Jesus said, you know, you're cleansed, right, by the words that he's spoken to you, yeah. right? So it's, it's ultimately it's the word of God, but it's, it, it's, again, you know, it's the follow through with the word, yeah. right? The word brings discipline, but you can hear the word, but if you don't apply it, well, you're not... You're not actually learning any discipline. Right. Amen? Yeah. You have, it has to be the word applied yeah. that brings discipline. Yeah. It's the word applied. The word applied. Everyone say, the word applied, the word applied. Brings, discipline the word applied. brings discipline 
to my life. life. Amen. Amen. Now he says, are you guys getting something out of this? Yes. All right. He says, uh, then it's not touchy, it's not fretful, it's not resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. What does that mean? We have to forgive. Right? Jesus said, or you remember Peter asked Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? Seven times? Right? Peter thought he was being really spiritual. Uh, how about seven times? That's like quite a few times. And Jesus is basically like, oh, Peter, you're so cute, you know. How about seven times 70? Yes. Seven times 70. How many times is that? 490 times. 490 times. And that could just be in a day. Right? So I've learned over the years... You have to become, if you want to walk in freedom, if you want to enjoy life, you have to become a master at forgiveness. You have to learn to master forgiveness. You have to. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. You have to, you have to, you have to. You have to master forgiveness. And it's not always easy. I mean, no, it's not easy. Well, who forgives first? The smart one. Right? The bigger person has to forgive first. The wiser one will forgive first. The yielded one. Obviously, you both got to forgive, but... Well, they they need to ask me for forgiveness. Well, if that's what you're looking for, again, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, it says, It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Amen. Amen. We need to rejoice when right and truth prevail. You don't rejoice at, at somebody else's injustice or when something else bad happens to somebody. Don't be careful. Don't rejoice at that. Right. Because you'll end up falling into the same thing. Yeah. That's about that, you know, it's like, oh my gosh. Actually, thank you, Lord. I just remembered this. Um, I was, uh, I was in, what, second year Bible school, and uh, had s- some roommates and whatever, and, you know, I had a car, and this other guy had a car, and um, we were driving, I remember, we were driving to Bible school in the evening, Bible school was in the evening at the time, and, and I'm driving along, and I was, saw, uh, we were, we were take like, these back roads for a little bit of a shortcut, and I don't remember, like, if we saw this guy ahead of me and he was kind of speeding or if he was around, he was behind me and he tried to get around us, you know, because he was trying to get wherever. Anyway, he got pulled over and we actually saw him like, you know, get pulled over. And I was like, and I, I was just kind of like, oh, look at that guy. He got pulled over. And I was just basically like mocking him. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he thought he was going to get there faster. Right. And, um, and I remember my roommate actually saying, he's like, you better be careful, Dave. He's like, don't, don't muck. He's like, it can happen to you. And I was like, and I was kind of like, okay, yeah, 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 whatever. And I was just like, so I stopped, but I was just kind of like, I didn't really think much of it. And um, man, sure enough, like about a week later, I guess I was speeding somewhere. I don't even remember how it happened, where I was, but I got pulled over and I got a ticket. And I'm telling you, it was just like, (laughs) the Lord was like, remember that? You know, because he allowed it, not that God wanted me to get a ticket, but I I set myself up for that. Pride comes right before a fall. Amen? Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So you have to be careful. Don't ever rejoice that somebody else is unrighteousness, lest it will come back on you. Verse 7 says, love bears up under anything and everything. In other words, love is strong, right? Love is is the most powerful force. And when you implement it in the right way, it can, it can, it can, Lord, help me with these words. It can sustain anything, right? It's like, it's like a, it's like a great structure, right? That's, that holds up whatever it needs to hold up, 
You know, it's like I'm thinking of like a like this big bridge or a cave, right? And there's you have this structure, right, that holds it up. It's got to be really, really strong. And if you don't have love, guess what? Your whole structure, you know, your whole, you know, it's like that's why you have to have walls and the, everything has to be the, built the right way. You have to have that foundation. So love is a foundation, but, but it's also a great structure. Why? Because you're going to build things around it into your life, right, into relationships and all those different kinds of things. Amen. So it has, you, it has to be built with love. Otherwise, it'll fail. And he says, it's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Ever ready. Now, that's a tough one. Ever ready to believe the best of every person. Well, what if I know, you know some things that are not good about this person? Yeah, you might know some truth about something that's not good, right? But what that means is that, you know what, in spite of the bad that I know, I'm going to choose to believe that, you know what, God can change this person. I'm going to choose to believe that, you know what, they're going to turn around. I'm going to choose to believe that, you know what, they're better than this. And, of course, especially when you don't know if it's true, you know, it's like that's what gossip is, obviously, is, you know, you, you hear something and you think, oh, no, it must be true. Well, how do you, do you even know it's true? Because already, right away, the Bible says love believes the best of every person. So don't believe the negative. Don't believe the worst. Believe, choose to believe the best. Right? I mean, are people not innocent until proven guilty? Except a lot of times in our own mind, oh, they must be guilty. Right? So we're quick to pass judgment. I mean, how many have ever done that even just with something, you know, you're, you're in a discussion and all of a sudden you think you know what they're going to say, right? And you go ahead and you're like, you preempt it, right? Because you basically prejudge them instead of waiting to find out, like, where they're really coming from, what they're really wanting to say. I've done that. Amen. Anybody ever done that here? One or two people? Praise God. <laughs> Just me and you, yeah. No, we have to get rid of all prejudice. prejudice. All prejudice is is prejudging people before we know anything about them or we know the truth about a certain thing. And that's what's wrong. It's not even, you know, people talk about racism and all this stuff. It's not even about a racism thing. It's a prejudice thing. It has nothing to do with color. You can be prejudiced against white people, a certain class of people, right? Or a certain place they're from. Or a certain, uh, you know, again, it's now, it's a certain, it's whatever you believe, and you can, you can be prejudiced against them. You know, it's easy to like, you know, we, we see things, we see people, that they post things, right? And we think like, already we think we know who they are and what they're all about. And really we don't. I mean, you might have some idea, but like, you know, if you were ever to really sit down and talk with that person, you might find out that they're actually not much different than you. And maybe they have a couple different ideas, but who doesn't? I mean, how many of you had some crazy ideas like, you know, before you found the Lord? That's for sure. Amen. <laughs> All kinds of crazy ideas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he says in verse 7, its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. That's some strong love. It endures everything without weakening. If I said, what if I can't endure some of this stuff and I'm feeling weak? And you gotta, you got to just soak, you gotta, you got to spend some more time in, in the presence of God, soaking in His love. And you got to take this word. And you know what I would do too? What, what I did in Bible school, because I was reading this, I'm like, man, I, I got some things to work on here. And so I would take this, chapter 13, and I would put, in fact, that's why I have it at the back table, the love confession. And if you haven't grabbed one of those, make sure you grab one of those at the back table before you leave today, the love confession. And not only is it, it's not just 1 Corinthians 13, there's actually a whole bunch of scriptures in there all woven together. Um, but so what I did is I would go back and I would read I would read this out loud to myself, and I, instead of putting love in there, I would put my name in it. And so I would say, you know, um, David, with God's love in him, does not insist on his own rights 
for his own way, for he is not self-seeking. Or I would just, for I am not self-seeking. I am not touchy, fretful, or resentful. I take no account of evil done to me, and I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I do not in, rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. I am ever ready to believe the best of every person. My hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and I endure everything without weakening. And I would do that, like, daily. For, for a season, I did that until I really got in me. Because when you hear yourself say it about yourself, you begin to believe it. Amen? You will begin to believe it, and it will change you because it's going to change the way you think. And when you begin to change the way you think and that gets down into your heart, then it changes your corresponding actions. Amen? Verse 8, love never fails. It never fades out or becomes obsolete. We're always going to need love. We're always going to have love because we're always going to be with God. It never fails. So in other words, understand this. If you're walking in love in, a, in whatever situation, you have to understand that you can't fail. God is not going to allow you to fail in that situation. He's going to bring it around. Right? He's going to bring it to pass. He's going to work it out because love never fails. Now, again, if you're doing it for your own selfish motive, it's going to fail. Or for other reasons, it's going to fail. That's why we, we ha love has to be the foundation of everything and, and anything. Otherwise, it's pointless. It's pointless. You know, even come even even back to you know like a financial breakthrough. You know, you can believe in God for for this or that or whatever, but ch always check your heart. What's the motivation? You know, what would you do with a million dollars if you suddenly had a million dollars? What are you gonna do with that? What's the motivation for it? What's the purpose behind it? Just so you can have what you want? Right? How much of it's going to be spent on you? How much of it's going to be spent elsewhere? You've got to think of those things. He says, as for prophecy, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they'll be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away and lose its value and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, it's incomplete, and it's imperfect. Remember that. Whatever you know, you only know part of it. Whatever you think you know, you really only know part of it. And that's the, again, that's the danger of prejudging a situation or a person is you really only know part. I would see things, you know, like in the ministry, and I'd be like, I don't understand, like, why they're doing that, why they're making that decision. Because, like, I knew certain things, like, and, and just thought, that doesn't make sense. Like, that's wrong, you know. But I didn't know the whole. There's a lot of times, there's always other details that you don't know about that are factors in making decisions that you weren't privy to. Well, why didn't they ask me? Because you didn't need to know. Right? How come I wasn't brought in on this? Probably because of that attitude right there. <laughs> Amen. More than likely. More than likely. Our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary and incomplete and imperfect. Remember, even when God shows you something right by the Holy Spirit, by word of knowledge or whatever, dream, vision, whatever. Again, he's only showing you what he needs you to focus on. Doesn't mean that, you know, you've got it all figured out. And that's why, you know, you have to pray into those things. Amen? And say, okay, God, you show me what I need to do with this. Don't all of a sudden just assume then that you, okay, well, this is what it is. Because you only know part. Remember, the part is not the whole. Everyone say, the part... It's not, the whole. it's not the whole. It's only the part. 
and you have a part to play, but you're not the whole. Amen? Good. You're not the whole. We need one another. Good. Amen? God didn't design the arm to control the whole body. The arm is just an appendage that helps the body. Amen? But we need the body. You know, God is genius at how we put it all together and how he fashioned us all together as the body to function together. Amazing. It says, but when the complete and the perfect, the total comes, the incomplete and the imperfect will vanish away and become antiquated, void and be superseded. Now, remember this, verse 11. When I was a child, how many remember those days? Oh, what fun to be a child again. Do, do you know how weird that would be, though? Like, if knowing what we know now, if you could go back and be a child, like in a child's body, and just like without all the, but like you still, like you still, let's say you still thought like a child, but you, you had all this other knowledge from being an adult. It actually wouldn't be fun to be a child. No. It would be miserable. Yeah. I'll let, you can think about that later on. But he says, when I was a child, I talk like a child. I thought like a child. I reason like a child. Now that I've become a man, I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. I mean, no, eventually there's things you have to just lay aside, right? We're not kids anymore. Right? We take on new responsibilities. Right? We, we embrace discipline instead of trying to shirk it. Why? Because, guess what? Children don't have all the same benefits that you do being an adult. True? There's a lot of benefits to being an adult that you don't get as a child. We always tell our kids, listen, when you, when you have your own place, you can eat what you want. Right? You can go to bed what you want. Right now, you're under my roof. You can eat what I say and go to bed when I say. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's the way it is. Amen. Amen. See, the thing is, we don't learn how to... If, and if a child doesn't learn how to receive instruction and discipline, they won't know how to receive instruction and discipline from the Lord. That's the problem. So, and that's the problem with a lot of adults, is they never had instruction and discipline, therefore they don't know how to receive it when it comes. They don't know what to do with it. They push it. They resist. They rebel. And then they wonder why things are falling apart. Right? He says, for now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or an enigma. But when the perfect comes, we shall see in reality face and, in, and face to face. It says, now I know in part imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in this same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. How many know God understands you better than you understand yourself? Thank goodness. And see, <laughs> that's all part of just growing up even spiritually, right? I'm not, I'm not even talking about naturally. I'm talking about even like spiritually is actually finding out who we are, who he's made us to be, and what we can become in him. It's a whole journey. How many of you know now you've found things out, just even the last few years, you've found things about yourself that you didn't really understand before? Right? You, you didn't just grow in knowledge, but you grew in, in understanding of, oh, I think this is why I do that. And isn't that fun, though, to actually start finding those things out? Even if it's not a good thing, right? And you learn something that, you know, now I understand why I act that way. It's freeing, right? It's liberating. Oh, praise God. Why? Because if you don't know what's wrong, you can't change it. Right. Amen. You know, the first step in admitting, the first step in solving a problem, right, is admitting you have one. <laughs> and then, that's not my problem. That's your problem. No, remember, the problem is always with you. Yeah. Anytime, <laughs> anytime there's a conflict, right, with somebody else, 
I'm not saying the other person might not have a problem too, but that doesn't matter because you can't change the other person. All you can change is you. You have to change. You have to say, God, help me change. Lord, I want to change. Diapers have to be changed regularly. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the whole thing you see is we, when we see God clearly for who he is, we see what he wants us to become. Right? And that's why we have to... It's, that's what you see in his presence. That's what you begin to experience in his presence. Who he wants us to become. Who he's called us to be. So remember, God doesn't look at you and treat you for the way you are now. He graces you and he blesses you because of who he's called you to be. He graces you and blesses you because he already paid the price. Right. Amen. Yeah. But, and so, so in other words, but God is so good. I mean, and this is the, the hard thing that we have problem. That's why, that's why we treat people based on what we feel they deserve. Right? But God doesn't actually treat us that way. He treats us so much better beyond what we do deserve. That's his grace and his mercy extended. Because remember, if we got what we deserved, boy, we'd be in trouble. Right? Mercy is the fact that we don't get what we deserve. And grace is what enables us to receive what we don't deserve. Amen? So remember that, you know, when you, when you deal with people, how would Jesus deal with them? How would Jesus treat them? Not, how you, not what you feel they deserve. What does God say they deserve? And that's a very humbling thing. Amen? Yeah. That's a very humbling thing. Because we don't usually want to give people what they don't deserve. Maybe because we felt like we didn't get what we deserved. So then in turn, what do we do? We, we, we sow what was sown into us instead of sowing what we want to reap. So stop sowing what you, what you think is the harvest and sow for the harvest. Sow for the harvest that you want. And that, you know, that's how I look at people when I bless them. It's like I've, there's been a lot of people I'm like, man, they probably don't even deserve this. Well, praise God, they're going to get blessed. And I'm believing it's going to make a change in them. Amen. So we don't so we don't we don't we don't bless people because they deserve it. We bless people because we want to see them grow and change. Amen. 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 I mean, do you think I took you to Tampa because you deserved it? <laughs> I could have taken a lot of other people before I took you. That's right. <laughs> and she was happy to give it up. In fact, it was part of her idea. I think you should take Travis. I was like. It's actually a good idea. We need to do that. And it made a huge impact in you. So you don't, you don't bless people because they deserve it. You bless them because where you, where you want them to see them end up. Amen. Amen. I had to put my flesh under on that trip. I'll tell you right now. Especially that first night. We shared a room. It was fun. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> By the next night, I was like, you know what? I got a better idea here. We're only going to play this as long as we need to. <laughs> then we're going to have quiet. <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about. I know. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's used to going to sleep with this music on. And I'm like, and I'm like, like I cannot sleep with this <laughs> This is not going to work. You know what I mean? It, wasn't, it was good music. I was just like, 
why do we need music all night long? And then, you know, you'd be like tossing and turning halfway through the night. I'm thinking, no wonder you can't sleep. You get, it, it needs to go off. You'd be able to just like sleep with quiet and you're in peace. So. <laughs> At least you didn't snore. So. Amen. That's all right. That's okay. We all know people that snore. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right, let's wrap this up. We're almost done here. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry I had to use that example, but yeah, I know you are. Um, just, just making it real. <laughs> just making it real. Just making it real. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 13, and so faith, hope, and love abide. Faith, that conviction and belief respecting man's relationship to God and the divine things. Hope, that joyful and confident expectation of our eternal salvation and with what comes now. And love, that true affection for God and man growing out of God's love for us and in us. And these, these three, but the greatest of these is love the greatest of these is love so I want to encourage you this week to really allow the love of God just to saturate you and meditate on it and say Lord help me in the areas that that I'm falling short in or that I'm weaker in help me in those areas because I guarantee you when you when you work on those areas and believe me you'll be tested you'll be tested You'll be tested. Because otherwise, it, you're not going to know. You're not going to know how it's working. But when you come up with it, so just expect the test. And when you're tested, say, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity to grow. Thank you for this opportunity to grow in love. Thank you for this opportunity to be patient. Thank you for this opportunity to be kind. Thank you for this opportunity not to judge. Thank you for this opportunity not to insist on my own right or my own way. Amen. Amen. And you're going to watch the growth that happens to you spiritually. Because when that growth happens spiritually, it manifests itself not only in your relationships, but it manifests in every way. The favor of God grows on you. The blessings of God are going to pour. I'm telling you, some people, they have a hard time receiving the blessings of God because there's a blockage in this area of walking in love, and so they're hindering their own breakthrough. They're hindering their own financial blessings even. Amen? Amen. We'll have to get to that another time. But who needed to hear that today? It was good. Amen. You're watching online. Don't forget to share this. Amen. And post it. Reshare this with people. Don't just send it to those people you know who need to walk in love. Send it to everybody. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray for a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because as, you, as you're hearing these things, God's been putting His finger on things that He wants you to deal with, that He wants you to surrender to Him. And so you have to say, yes, Lord, I surrender that area. Yes, Lord, I surrender this all to You. Lord, help me. Lord, give me the, just ask him, say, Lord, help me. Lord, give me the grace to walk in your love. Lord, give me the ability. Give me the capacity to let your love flow through me. To let your love just abound in me. Lord, not the way I see things but the way you want me to see things. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for your grace. Thank you for your abounding love in and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just thank him for a moment. I'll just thank him right now. Thank him that that love is working in you. Thank him that his presence is going before you, that is abiding in you, is changing you. His presence is changing you. His love is changing you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is available every single day. This love, His presence, it's, ava- it's, it's within you. It's within you. That power to overcome that is available every single day. As many times as you need it. Doesn't matter if you fell short even in, the, even in the beginning of the day, you're not going to fall short later on. You're going to yield to His love. And there's going to be growth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He's with you. He's with you strong. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Never let you down. Never give up on you. Doesn't matter how many other people have given up on you. Doesn't matter how many people have forsaken you. Jesus never will. He never will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I felt for today. Amen? Hope you were blessed by that. Glory to God. I'm excited. God's doing some good things in people. Amen? Cultivating some amazing things in people. It's exciting. I mean, no, growth isn't just immediate, right? Growth is a process. God gives us, you know, a good 18 years just to grow up physically. How long do you think it takes to really grow up spiritually? Your whole life. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. Thank you for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Share this from our Facebook pages. And uh, come and join us here at the River Church, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. House of Joy, Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Contact us for details. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.